this is Sarah the Stitchin' Mommy and I'm here on Monday, May 20th with my progress from Stitch Mania. Because um, now, the tr if you were following doing Stitch Mania for the amount of days that correspond with the year, this is 2019, so um, a lot of people are going through the 19th with, with Stitch Mania and that's what I did. And so now it's over. <laughs> but Cinnamon is here with us, so that should perk you all up. She has been a little uh, off lately because I changed my filming to be later in the day to adjust for the sun movements, and so a lot of times she's still napping <laughs> when I'm filming. So, but she's here today, and she's causing an earthquake, so sit down, please. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm here. I've got a little bit to show you, and can show you the four mirabilias you'll be able to see before I come back to you next time. First, I thought I would share a little bit of, um, I guess, haul that I have. Um, uh, uh, somebody contacted me who she used to own or run an LNS and had a whole bunch of leftover Mill Hill treasures that um, <clears throat> she didn't had didn't have a use for and knew that I stitched Mirabilia's and Nora Corbett's and various things and could possibly find a use for these. And so she just wanted um, reimbursement for shipping and I said, sure, that sounds fun. So that came this week in this lovely box <laughs> full of treasures. So all of these Mill Hill treasures and the a lot of the um, cases are yellowed because they're, they're probably older, but I have bought them before from LNS's and they're yellowed and the, the beads are fine inside. Something she recommended is maybe take them all, open them all up and figure out like their actual color in daylight. Um, and I'm not sure, I might do that. I might also just, they all, all have the, uh, the code on them and right now my extra Mill Hill beads are just in a floss box lined up by code. If the pattern calls for something, I know exactly which number to go look for. So I like things like that. So we will see how I get that organized if they fit in a box nicely. <laughs> but that's really fun. So thank you for that. Um, and so going forward, especially with my niece's fairies, I think that'll be fun because I think each fairy calls for some treasures. So potentially, since I'm planning to use my own floss anyways, I could use something, even if I have like a similar shape bead in this package to what is called for. It's a different color. I can maybe just adjust the color scheme of the fairy to account for the beads I have. So that's going to be really fun to look through that and see throughout the years where I can plug them in. So thank you so much. <laughs> now um, I will show you what I, how far I got on my stitching shelf, which was my main mania project. Um, I strayed a little bit from my original goal of one scene per day to kind of act as a new start. Um, sorry for the kitty induced earthquake here. She's rubbing <laughs> the iPad. Um, but instead I count, I decided to count from thing to thing and using the shelves a lot. Please stop. You're going to make people sick. Um, using the shelves to get to where I need to go a little easier so that I'm not counting too far just to ensure that things are nice and um, safe. So she finally settled down. There she goes. <laughs> finally. Okay, no more earthquakes for you. So this is what that looked like when you saw it last. And here is where I got to this week. Can that all fit in there? <laughs> I think so. So what I did is a little different than I'd planned. I had worked down this col this row, which I showed you, and then had started to come down. Um, I think I had come over here too. Yes, I came over here, and then when I when I um, counted up from this motif to touch the stitching that I'd already done, it was accurate. <laughs> I was like, yes! It's like that finish. 
or that feeling when your border matches up times a thousand. Like this was, it was, I was very ecstatic. So, um, I changed things up a little bit based on a Stitch Too Far Ingeborg's birthday cell. So she had on the 15th stitch on a frog or something that you have had to frog on. So I came over here and I started a little frog. There's only two colors in here, so it's really hard to tell that it's a frog, but nevertheless, that is the start of a frog. And then she's, the next day was stitch on green. So then I came over here and instead of stitching blue on the lady's dress, I stitched green of the book that's behind her that she's leaning on. Two shades of green right there. And then the next day was friends. So I, after that, I came down here and worked on this bookshelf color, which is a new shade from the color I'd picked on these two bookshelves because these two bookshelves were a different color. So I did some bookshelf and then I dropped down into this scene and came over here to do a dog for man's best friend. So this is like a golden retriever with one color and you can kind of tell that that's the start of a dog there. This is his um, his head and his paws coming out and then his tail down here. So that's that. I guess I could show you. Don't move kitty, I'm good. So here's the frog, here's the book she's leaning against and here's the golden retriever right there. And then I came down and worked in this scene of these ladies, um, the two ladies next to their needlework and her, the theme for the last day of, of Engelborg's birthday cell, which she labeled a birthday too far or a B-day too far cell. Um, I came down here and worked a little bit. This is a little unwieldy now that it's so large down at the bottom. Um, so I worked down here. This is like, you know, cracks between the books and these are this is some of the color in in the people. And then I hopped over here, did this color down because this color came all the way to the bottom which is touching the snow on the very last bookshelf. So, that means I got to the bottom of the piece. I didn't quite get to the far What is that? left, right, the far right side, because I stopped, I stopped before I got there. The right side is probably like right here. I didn't quite get to that side. I'm making a mess of things, but I did get to the bottom. So that's the size of the piece. And I'm pretty happy with that. Going forward, I did park this, this shelf because I wanted to, to move down. So I, I have shelf color that can keep going. Um, and I'll do that another time. Oh yeah, the other thing, her last, her last um, clue, I guess I didn't say, man, <laughs> we had a uh, cloud came out, it's really dark all of a sudden, um, was old and new, and I was, at first, I mean, anything in this piece could work for that, but it made me, rather than pick a specific vignette to work on, I figured I was going to, I worked on one old parked thread, and that's the one I chose, and I just worked it till it was finished. I picked one that had a lot of colors, a lot of symbols next to it, so it would just um, not take too long. This more of the, I didn't want something where I would have to count all over trying to fill, finish the thread. So I, I, it's the bottom of this book, one of the main colors in that book. So I picked that color because then I could just stitch it until the thread ran out. And, and then new, meaning I went down and got to the new bookshelf. So that's what I did on that day, and then Sunday I was also down in that bottom bookshelf. So that's fun. Going forward, I am really excited about this piece to pick it up and work on it, and I'll probably continue whenever I pull it out. Um, I'll work some on work stitching the parked threads, getting those all taken care of as well as working on the bookshelf, the bookshelves themselves, to continue to make um, structure on those last two bookshelves to make sure any of the vignettes will be easy to count to in the future. So, because I really enjoyed that. When I was working on Ingeborg's prompts, it was so much fun to um, 
be able to count easily to a specific item and work on just that item. I thought that was really, really fun. And going forward, this piece, realistically speaking, because I have so many things to work on and so many things I want to work on, I'm probably never going to finish it <clears throat> in my lifetime. And I'm okay with that. It's more the progress, the process of stitching it and the different sections are just really enjoyable. And so I think it'll be a really fun use of that project to have it like this, where I can just pick, pull it out and work on whatever chunk I want to at that point. And I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know that I'll, I don't like the, like, um, in the future, I'm happy to just focus in on one area. Like jumping around all over wasn't necessarily the most fun, but because I knew I was laying a groundwork and a structure for everything else, that made it fun. And it was purposeful groundwork. It wasn't like gridding, which you're eventually gonna rip out because you don't need it in the final product. This was gridding that will stay there forever and be part of the finished piece. So each stitch meant something and it's gonna stay there. So I really, really enjoyed that. Had a lot of fun with that. So I don't know when it's gonna come out again, if it will come out at all this year. Potentially in, in uh, arbitrary August at the very least. Um, so we'll see, we'll see about that. Um, but it was a lot of fun for Stitch Mania, and I'm happy I did it. So going forward, the rest of Mania, I'm gonna do Mirabilia Mania. And so I decided just to do things alphabetically, just because that's kind of how I think. And nobody else had um, expressed a desire to work on things with me on a certain day, so I'll just work on them alphabetically, and that's the way it's gonna be. Um, Terry from Terry Lee Crafts really wanted to coordinate working on a Mirabilia with me, but we don't have any the same at the moment. I'm I'm gonna probably start Summer Queen next year, and so then we'll have that together, maybe we could work on that together once in a while. But at the point, at the moment, I have three going, and she has maybe two or three, and none of them are the same. <laughs> so it doesn't overlap, but that's all right. Um, the first one I will work on will be Stay in Tomorrow, uh, Adia the Garden Fairy. And this is one that, I already have them, but this is one that has a lot of treasures. So if I do another Mirabilia that has a, a lot of treasures, like it'll be fun to go to that box and um, see what I can find. So this is what Adia looks like now as her starting point. She's on like a, a brown fabric that's got a slight green hue to it, but it's mostly brown. And <clears throat> I will have to get the pattern out to see what I want to do. I may just keep working in this area. I may also go up into her wing. We'll see how I feel. <coughs> we need to stop and take a drink of water. So that's where she's at right now. We'll see how far I get in two days. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to working on these um, It'll be fun to go back to some bigger stitches because these are all 32 count, uh, two over two. So the equivalent of 16 count X's. And so after working on 28 count, it's gonna be kind of a refreshing break <laughs> to work on that. Although my travel piece, Midsummer Roses, was on 14. So it hasn't been all, all tiny. Um, the next one alphabetically is Ashley's Roses. And I've just got a small start on this, this one. <clears throat> There's a lot of these bows up here, which is where I started. And so I doubt I will get to her yet, but I'll keep working up here and get some of those um, flower garlands, you know, worked on. So this is what she looks like to start with. This, she will be on Wednesday and Thursday. <clears throat> and this is on like a... It's also 32 count. What is the pattern called for? I think it's very similar to that. It's not straight antique white. This calls for cream. So it could be cream. <laughs> could be cream linen. It's uh, possibly a Zweigert Belfast. So <clears throat> very fun, bright colors. So that'll be fun. So we'll see. I think this area is all the way complete, but as you can see here, there's some holes. So 
I'll just keep working along on the top and see how far I get. So that's the starting point on her. She'll have Wednesday and Thursday. <clears throat> and then I've got to roll her up. I get a lot of comments that my fabric is really smooth. <clears throat> and it's because I keep it rolled up and I stitch on it rolled up and it th never gets creases. And I really like that. That's a big reason why I stitch the way I do in hand with a roll and stored in a roll. It's because I don't like all the creases. And so <clears throat> it's nice to have things always fairly smooth. And you will have a, a few creases here and there. <clears throat> but for the most part, you know, everything's really nice. And all the time, and I and I love that. That's a, the, that's a deliberate choice. <laughs> so here's um, the next one, which will be Friday and Saturday. Lady of the Flag, and she is just a, got a little bit of a start up here. So we'll see how far I get on her. I'm doing her on a green. I forget what this is called. I, I'm always forgetting this one. Let's see if I can. This is a a, a, a witch alt fabric. So it's a little bit see through and stiff, but I don't mind stiff fabric. This is um, yeah, the green. It looks a little bit more like that. Um, so I have her torch finished in her arm, ex except for back stitching. So that is mostly done. I think there might be some beads up here. So I'll probably finish this area and get this pole finished up, and then you know work on her because I do like working from the top down but she's looking a little scary. <laughs> so I think I will um, get her looking more human, hopefully, before I'm done. And I do my skin two over two on all my Mirabilia's just as charted. I don't personally see the need for one over one skin. The time it takes to stitch four times as much for what I personally think is little payoff. I know a lot of people like that look, but I don't really care for it. And I think it looks just fine, gorgeous, you know, the way it is, the way it's charted. And so unless something is charted to be one over one, like Teresa Wensler will purposefully chart her features one over one, and then you kind of have to do it, and I don't mind doing it. But if it's not charted that way, I'm not gonna change it and make more work for myself unnecessarily, so just my two cents. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to do one over one and that's fine for you, but I don't mind doing it two over two. I think it looks beautiful the way it is. So that's what I do. My last one, which will spill over into um, it's Sunday and Monday. So I'll be halfway through the rotation next time I come film, assuming I get to film on Monday. This is Stargazer. So um, I worked on this quite a bit earlier in the year. So you've seen this a lot. This is stitched on hand dyed fabric by me. One and only piece I've ever dyed. And here she is. Gotta fold her up so you can see her fabric. And she's, her head is done with her ribbons and the beads in the sky are started. I will probably not work on the beading in the sky um, this time. I'll, I'll work on her jacket. I'm pretty sure that's, that's my goal. So that's what she will look like, or that's what she looks like now, and I will spend a couple days on her. And then I will show you the other two when I come back um, next week. I've also got Villa Mirabilia and Winter Queen to go at the very end of the last week of May, as well as the last day on her. So that's my plans for my main stitching. This week during travel stitching, I've been working on Midsummer Roses and slowly but surely and making progress on that. It feels like slow going. Um, still have not finished the white and it's kind of depressing to keep coming back to you guys who some of you think I've already finished it because I've been working on it so close to a finish for so long. But I guess that's just how it works sometimes. So this is Midsummer Roses by Paula Vaughn and my oldest whip. Here it was last time you saw it. Here it is now. Again, just like last week, 
may not be able to see the difference. But I am working more on the white in here. It goes all the way out to here. I just have this little patch left of white to finish. And then I can backstitch. So. <sighs> it's coming. It's coming, really. I still have hope I can finish this in May. So keep cheering me on. Um, as a travel piece, you know, it gets... It's... Uh, my, my travel stitching currently in the school year is actually not too shabby because of sitting in the valet line for so long every day, but I am interacting with my daughter at the same time most of the days, so that does kind of cut into it a little bit. If she needs help with her homework or I, the book I chose to read her ends up being long, you know, there's it doesn't end up being a consist consistent time every day. But it is coming along, slowly but surely. Lord willing, I'll get to the backstitching this week and I can start in on that. Woohoo! <laughs> And get that rolling. So I'm still enjoying that. Still happy. I'm. I'm. It's really not too bad working on the white. It's just the time of available is not there. So, um, really excited to start backstitching on that one. I guess I almost forgot. I still have my temperature pieces. I have been working on those, and they are both cut up. I got behind on my temperature quilt yet again. It's like a broken record story of this project um, because there were a few days where I had to choose I've got a half hour to stitch should I stitch on my stitch mania piece or my temperature piece because I only have time for one and so I would choose my stitch mania piece because I really wanted to make progress on that every day and have it be obvious you know what I'm where I'm going and what I'm doing on that piece with a, stitch, a stitching shelf so temperature garden didn't get or te my temperature quilt got some days where it, it didn't get any love but I managed to get back and it's currently caught up again so within a week I fell off the wagon and then got back on <laughs> so here is the mock-up of the temperature quilt you can find in my Etsy shop and here's what it looked like last time <clears throat> and here it is now and again, I have a parked thread on the sashing, which I'm really enjoying because then I can, if I have a few extra minutes, I can work on it. And if not, whenever I come to it, I can at least stitch two blocks worth and keep going on that particular day that it's that I'm working on it. So that's where that is. We're continuing to be cool. It has not stayed warm. It's going to be in the 60s all week now going forward for the next few days. So a very, very mild year so far for Southern California, so it's a little strange. I'm I'm curious if we're going to get super hot this summer like we usually do because it's been so warm. And usually by now we're, you know, into the 80s consistently, so it's a little bit strange. But some of these bright or really dark red colors were 111 or more, I believe. 110 or more. What's that one? Well, it's, it might be different on here. But yeah, 110 or more. And we had that four times in 2017, which is the year I stitched this one. So there's like, I don't know if you can see it, right here at the end of that line. My sister calls that my angry flower <laughs> because they're all very dark. Um, but I'm curious if I'll get there this year because it's been cool a lot longer than usual. So like this is May that year, uh, January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, see there's even oranges already. And it got cool here in that May, but then oranges again, you know, where it is up into the 90s. And we haven't been in the 90s yet. So, but then I guess it got cool again last June for a chunk. So we'll see. I'm just really curious how it's going to go because it's... It's been different than it has been since I've been paying close attention to the temperatures with these patterns, which has been a few years now. So it's been very rainy, which is good because we're getting um, coming off of a drought. So it's that's that's a good thing. Lots of rain. Um, my other one is my balloons, just coming along. Here's the mock-up of that one. And I think this one's really fun. Didn't get any more done on that cloud, so it's still half finished. But this is what it looked like before. And here it is now. 
And both of these, I never remember to tell you. It, they're 28 count, one over one. This is MCG Textiles, light blue. Used to be available at Hobby Lobby, but it is not sell, but sold there anymore. And it is actually even. I measured it <laughs> with my ruler in the store before I bought it. Um, so half finished cloud, finished this row and started in on this row. And it's, you know, tapering more. There's one more row to go before we finish out May. So I think that's looking pretty good. And it's very fun. So I think that's all I have to show you. I didn't work on my Little House Needleworks November at all this week because there were never any opportunities to just grab and go, which is what that piece is being used for right now until Midsummer Roses is finished. So I won't show you that. Um, nothing else is lurking over here, so I think I am done. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the month. Hope you enjoyed Stitch Mania or our Still enjoying it if you're doing the whole month long extravaganza. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say today. So enjoy your day, your week, and happy stitching. Bye.